What if there was a way to remove your anxiety and stress before Google's RRK interview? Good news, we are going to cover this in part three of our video series on how to crush the Google interviews utilizing ChatGPT. And similar to parts one and two, we're gonna be using a real resume and a real job description with our prep plan. Imagine saving five hours, 10 hours plus of prep time with an easy and simple strategy to follow. If this sounds like a game changer for you, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Are you ready to unlock these secrets? Let's jump right into a screen share. Okay, let's dive in and we are going to take our top three items as we've done in parts one and parts two. So we have Jane Smith's resume, all the specificity has been scraped out, but I have the actual experience, all the bullets, everything that we need to know, but all the company names and, and personal information has been changed. Then, this is the role we're exploring. Senior program manager, I have highlighted global talent and organizational resilience. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time there, but this is just pretty standard Google job description, and we have all the items about the job responsibilities, minimum and preferred qualifications. Then, we hop into our trusted ChatGPT, our resource. So let's dive right in and we're gonna walk through the steps I took. So if we start here, I'm going to include these prompts in the YouTube description so you'll have them, but it starts with something like this. I'm headed into a role-related knowledge interview at Google and pasted below are my resume and the job description. When looking at the resume and job description, what are the most important items I should be considering before entering this interview? Please let me know if you have any questions. And then I throw the resume in here and that's just pasted and you don't even have to worry about the formatting. It will pick up on that and all that information's in there and then you can see the Google job description as well. So ChatGPT, what it spits out is it really is finding alignment in multiple different areas between Jane's resume and the job description. So it starts with the requirements. So it really gets into the requirements here from a qualifications minimum and preferred qualifications. Then it talks about relevant experience. This is specifically talent management, organizational design, workforce planning, risk and resilience. So it's starting to find alignment between the job description and specifically Jane's resume, then leadership is a critical function of any program management role. Then there's a little bit of this operational resilience, right? And so we have cultural fit, DEI, technical skills, communication skills, some actual questions to be prepared for, questions to ask and final tips. So it throws a lot at you, but it's just, this is generic. This is what I would like to call a warm up. We're just starting to save some time by having ChatGPT identify what are the most critical items in the role and, and how is my resume connected. So now we want to go a level deeper. So we say, okay, awesome, thanks. Now let's actually add that additional layer and let's bring more focus into the top three themes in the job description. So when talking about program management, global talent, and organizational resilience, what are some other concepts I wanna consider when preparing for this interview? Now we get into it. So from program management perspective, we're focusing in on three critical areas, complexity and scope, stakeholder management, and metrics and outcomes. So this is getting your mind, or in this case, it's Jane's mind, really connected to these items and starting to think about examples, potential scenarios that might come up. Obviously, global talent, we're looking at DEI, overall talent development and recruitment and retention. Also lots of good nuggets and here lots of good keywords that are starting to pop up. And then organizational resilience, we're getting a lot more clarity around this. Risk management, change management, and business continuity. So starting to think about, okay, what are those areas that I've worked on those areas in my career? What do I imagine facing in this type of role? And then it even throws some additional concepts to consider. So. What do we do next? What do we keep digging because again, this is one of the critical items with ChatGPT is that we keep pushing. And remember, for this specific video, these prompts worked. 
sometimes they don't work. So we just need to pivot, change, and we can always adapt and adjust. But then we say, now, great, we have built a great foundation and understanding what we need to have success in this role. As you look at my resume and the job description, what examples that I have highlighted in my resume do you think I should be focusing on when answering behavioral interview questions? Why is this so important? Instead of having to sit and really think through what have we done, how does it relate to the role? ChatGPT is just going to tell us. They're going to say, okay, here are the leadership and talent management examples that you might want to use with a potential question, strategy planning and analysis and execution. There's another one, change management and transformation. There's another one, feel free to pause anytime. I'm just going to scroll through this pretty quickly. Stakeholder management, what we highlighted there in a potential question, risk management and resilience. So we're getting over to that operational side talent management and DEI, we're getting over to the global talent side, and then just some more basic stuff that can come together, operational efficiency and process improvement and customer and user experience. And again, now it's pulling out the examples from our career. So we now know what we want to focus in on in regards to the specific job description and specific areas. And we have some practice questions. So now that we've had some behavioral practice questions, I want to move over to hypothetical questions. How are those going to impact the RRK interview? What am I potentially going to see? So I say, hey, like Google asks hypothetical questions. So keeping these items in mind, I'm looking for some data. What are some hypothetical job interview questions? And let's couple it with some themes that we should be focusing in on when answering these types of questions. What are we doing here? We're starting to create frameworks. We're starting to create that outline that when we go into these hypothetical questions, we're going to clarify, we're going to build in a framework, that outline, then we're going to make some assumptions and solve. But I actually jump ahead to the framework before clarifying questions because we just want to get a pulse on what the concepts are. So again, some hypothetical questions. We won't dive too much into that, but here are some themes. Okay cultural sensitivity, research, due diligence, local partnerships, diversity, inclusion, training, and onboarding, that in itself could be a great framework when we're thinking about potentially operating in a place we've never operated in before. And then the next one is more about some sort of technological, technological disruption. Hey, welcome to the world, right? AI is doing that currently. So we might want to think about proactive communication, upskilling, reskilling, risk management, employee well-being, and strategic planning. Again, another great framework. And now you can start to say, okay, well, I like some of those concepts and I like some of these concepts from area one, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify, well, what are our strengths and what are some of those areas we might want to be talking about in the RRK interview specifically with hypothetical questions. And then the last one is employee morale and engagement. Very common question. This could come up in the RRK or even the GNL interview, the Googliness and Leadership interview. So we're going to be looking at overall feedback, collaboration, leadership, well-being, continuous monitoring, all important not only for this type of program management role that's going to be more HR focused, but good for program management in general. Okay, so now we have these great themes. We have a few practice hypothetical questions. Now we want to go a level deeper. When we see these types of questions, how are we going to clarify them? And I specifically asked ChatGPT, hey, ask yes or no questions. I don't want any open-ended questions because closed questions to hypothetical questions are critical. You're actually showing data and making it very easy for your interviewer to answer the question. So now we're looking at this first question of the new data center in a new region. So we're just trying to understand, have we done that cultural assessment? Should we partner with anybody or keep it internal, et cetera, et cetera. These are starting to build that brain memory and brain connection to, wow, when I look at a question, what types of clarifying questions might I ask? Now, the second one, the internal or external, that's a really good common question to ask all the time. Sometimes initiatives are done totally internally. Sometimes they have some external support. So maybe you just capture that question. You say, you know what, that's a really good question that I'm going to ask all the time. 
and so on and so forth. And again, you can pause this video and I'll scroll up a little bit just to, to get a good pause here on all these questions. But with those other two hypothetical questions, now we really have some good specific questions I just start to say, okay, yeah, I would ask those questions or I don't like those, but I might consider other questions. Then we move on to assumptions. So I say, okay, awesome. Let's add one more layer. And we talk about, we want to make some assumptions before solving these. Assumptions are critical because they create a visual journey for our interviewer. So can we make three to five very specific assumptions for each one of these questions we're solving? And then I ask for some creativity and to be thinking about people, processes, and technologies. And so it really focused in on those items, but it also brought in some creativity to think about other items. So we talk about a new data center in a new region, and it's bringing in these specific items. It's going to make it much easier for your interviewer to follow along. And these can be pre-planned assumptions. So what do I mean by that? I mean that having a strategy and a plan going into these interviews of potential questions that might be asked and having a pre-planned future state can just remove a lot of that anxiety and stress that I mentioned in the beginning of the interview. So sometimes just getting a feel for what are the types of questions and what are some assumptions I can make can be a really, really powerful way to have success in these interviews. And again, They've created some really good assumptions. I'll let you pause and kind of check out the video and see if any of those are relevant or really good for you. Now, lastly, I said, okay, lastly, I want to tackle some more specific role related questions for this position. What I mean is very direct questions that are not really behavioral or hypothetical, more matter of fact related to this position and its requirements. Can you create some sample job interview questions like that for me? And of course, you can ask ChatGPT to create 50 hypothetical questions for you, 50 behavioral questions for you. And while I don't love all of these questions, some of them are really good. Like the first question, how do you define organizational resilience? And let's just take the first half of that question. Well, you still might want to clarify that question, but you may not need to go into a full framework and assumptions because it's a much more straightforward question. We'd still want to clarify, well, are we looking at this from a strategy, process, or stakeholder perspective, for example? But some of these are going to be more straightforward. It's like the second question, what tools or software have you used in the past for workforce planning and organizational design? But these more straightforward types of questions are likely to come up in the RRK interview. And while this is a program manager role, if we were looking at maybe a more technical role, we might ask ChatGPT to create some technical questions for us as well. But we wanna be thinking about the RRK interview in terms of behavioral, hypothetical, and maybe again, questions that are very, very specific to the role, very straightforward. I still recommend some level of clarification. And that's really it we can continue to dive in and provide a lot more context for chat gpt but obviously this is already a lot of information and a really really good starting place for us and that's it now let's add another layer that we haven't yet explored enriching chat gpt with additional content so for this video we focused in on a program manager role and that can be a bit generic but this could be enhanced by going into a Google search using the tools category and pulling up recent and relevant articles on global talent and organizational resilience. Now, if you were to do this, we can bring these articles, we can bring these content into ChatGPT and these recent publications will allow ChatGPT to give you an even more tailored response. If you hadn't had an opportunity to check out parts one and two, tons of invaluable tips for leveraging ChatGPT to help with your interview prep and save you lots of time. Again, if you want to see more of this content, hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment if there's more topics you want me to discuss in the future. If you're ready to ace that Google interview, we're here to help for every step of the way. Good luck, and until next time, keep crushing those interviews.